Hello, this is Bobby. How are you guys from Homespun Home? Oh my god, it has been one very nerve-wracking um, week and weekend, I have to confess. Now, I am going to try to do this video in a timely manner. Hopefully, it won't take me too long. But, um, to start with, this past week, the way my week has gone. Let's see if I can sit back here and get relaxed. Get everything situated. Oh. Oh my goodness. Okay, so. First of all, let me just say that um, I have I've been in a lot of pain this week. I know that we don't really like to focus on sickness and we don't like to focus on um, feeling you know, medical issues, but with the coronavirus, we've got enough of all that negative. Come on, Roxanne, come up here and sit with Mommy. Come on. Come on. But, uh, anyway, but what, what happened is this past week, what was it, let's see, today is um, Monday, so I think it was, um, might have been Friday, Friday, um, I tweaked my back, my lower back. Um, and I wasn't even really doing anything other than sitting <laughs> when it happened. Go figure. It seems like that's all I do now is just sit around and watch YouTube, uh, crafting channels, and whatever I can, you know. I like to watch old westerns. I like to watch um, YouTube channels on Dollar, uh, Dollar Tree crafts, um, high-end Dollar Tree crafts. Because um, I noticed some of the cutesy crafts for the younger women that are in their 20s is, is just a little too cutesy for me. So I like a little more sophisticated stuff. But as you can tell, looking around um, the um, my living room and everything, you can kind of tell that, um, well, this is just one of my rooms in my house. But I like a lot of the older, um, shabby Victorian whatever i'm kind of working through my home a little bit at a time getting rid of some things but also taking some things that i already have and redoing them but um i'm going to get off on a tangent because i don't have a an outline i don't have anything i'm going to be focusing on uh you know verbatim i have no no list no notes no nothing just me myself and i so hopefully i won't bore you too much but anyway i tweaked my back and um so I just, like I said, been sitting around, you know, watching YouTube videos, watching um, classic westerns. I like classic movies. Um, I do like some more modern movies, but I hate all the profanity. It's not that I'm delicate and I can't handle listening to profanity, but it's just, I'm like, why do they got to ruin a really good movie with so much profanity? It's like the more that they can use profane language, you know, or socially challenging language, let's just put it like that, just to be polite. It's like the cooler the movie's supposed to be. I'm like, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to use a lot of, um, you know, slang and um, profanity to get your point across. You know, it's to me, it's dumbing yourself down. But that's just my opinion. I mean, we we all cuss. I mean, I've cussed, and I'm not going to say I'll never cuss again. But it's just like every other word in certain movies. It's just like, oh my goodness, especially the F word. It's just so redundant. It's ridiculous. I can't stand it. But that's just me. Um, but anyway, so I hurt my back and I was just in extreme pain. I mean, when I did it, I went down on all fours. And I'm on my hands and knees in my da in my daughter's house, in her apartment, on, on the bathroom floor. Trying to determine, do I move my body to the left? Do I move it to the right? Do I get up? What do I do to somehow determine my mobility so I can get up out of the bathroom and get to a chair or a couch or the living room or to lay on the floor and on the carpet or something I had to figure out something I just wasn't sure let me check my volume because every time I forget to do that let me just check my volume to make sure I don't have my glasses so okay the volume is up good because I have a tendency to forget about that but anyway so I'm like oh great so luckily my daughter's house my daughter has a really cute apartment which I really think is she, she's very blessed to have it but I hollered for the kids, so they both come out of their bedrooms, and they had to come help me hobble to the living room, because, I mean, I was literally in so much pain, I couldn't even, I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand up straight, I couldn't do anything, I was just like, oh my God, 
I was in so much pain, and I've and I've done I've hurt my back a few times off and on over the years where I've tweaked it to where I walk like I'm an old lady or I walk like I've got a broomstick uh, stuck. I hate to say it, up my backside, but you know, that's just life. That's just what happens when you're 63 years old and you tweak a muscle. Well, I tweaked the muscle in my lower back, so I'm walking around like a 90 year old lady hunched over I mean severely hunched over half my height has disappeared into a hunched form like worse than the hunchback of Notre Dame okay I mean like you wouldn't believe I'm having to just literally hang on to the counter hang on to the wall wh whatever I can get my hands on to try to stabilize my body so I thought to myself well I'm going to contend with this in my own way I'm going to take some you know ibuprofen or whatever I have on hand and try to work this kink out maybe and it just it wasn't happening I mean the slightest movement on my part took my breath away literally felt like somebody was you know and you could touch my back you could touch the lower part of my back you could put pressure on my back and it felt really good there was no pain on the external aspect of it but deep inside my body way down in the inner depths of my core it was just like sharp agonizing throbbing electric seizing pain you know and so I slept on it the first night well that was a joke because uh, it just wasn't gonna happen and I, I can't remember if I slept on the couch with my granddaughter um, or if I slept in the bed, but needless to say, the next day, it was just as bad, if not worse. I was just dying. I was hunched over. I was quivering in pain. I could, I mean, literally shaking in pain. And my blood pressure was up a little bit just from the pain. So I endured for a couple days. And then finally, it happened Friday morning. I endured all day Friday, all day Saturday. And finally, I think... Was it yesterday? I think it was that I went to, um, it was Sunday. And so, no, I'm sorry, it happened Thursday. So Friday and Saturday, I was totally out of commission. Sunday, I was out of commission. And I thought after three days, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. I'm dying here. Um, so I went to the, um, uh, it's an urgent care facility, but it, I didn't know this, and, and it's like they're so uninformed. What happens is I started going to this facility, and then they exchanged owners or exchanged medical practices or facilities, however you want to call it. And so the doctor I started with ended up having to leave and go to another area to, to do his practice. And this new uh, clientele or new business came in. They were medical. And so what they do on the weekend, they're in urgent care facility and then during the week they are uh, primary care which they didn't bother to send me a letter to tell me about that they never sent me any information you know informing me of all this so um, I had been going there before I tweaked my back but I had never gone on the weekend I had no reason to because you know weekend visits to the ER or to the hospital or to the doctors is determined uh, on the an emergency situation which I was in an emergency situation because I tried everything. My daughter has these electrode things that you put on your back. She tried that. And that, that felt good while it was happening, but it didn't alleviate any of the discomfort once it stopped. And I couldn't, I still couldn't walk. So then um, she, she had this lidocaine. It was like two types of cream you put on. And I tried that. And that didn't seem to help a lot. As long as I sat still, I was okay, but if I got up to walk or try to move, and especially if I sat for a really long time, which, you know, is understandable, it was really bad. It was just so bad. Well, that day I went there to be seen, not knowing they were, a, you know, not um, a standard primary care during the weekends. They were a crisis care center on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. So it's pouring down rain. I'm, I'm hobbling into my car. Could couldn't move, couldn't hardly get into the car, but I had to drive myself to this clinic because I knew as soon as my daughter got home from work, and she worked at the hospital, so she had to take a shower and change, and I have no idea what time these people close, so I'm like, I'm not going to the ER, but I will go to this my regular clinic, and while I'm there, I'll try to um, 
you know, knock out two birds with one stone. Well, anyway, they ended up uh, doing curbside service where you had to sit in your car and wait. So it's pouring down rain, pouring down rain. And the lady told me when I went to go in after standing in the parking lot for 30 minutes to get myself together to even hobble into the facility to let them know I needed to be seen, as soon as I opened the door to walk in, they were like, no, ma'am, you can't come in. You'll have to go get in your car and you're going to have to call us. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Didn't think about the coronavirus as far as that part of it. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Again, didn't get any kind of notification from these people who are new now, taking over a new facility, a new practice. Um, and I'm sure they had all the patients that used to go there. Um, they had names, numbers, addresses. They could have sent out like a primary letter to saying, hey, this is what we do. And now that the virus is taking place, it never occurred to me, which I know a lot of places are doing it, but I'm not very bright, so I didn't think about, oh, I have to go sit, sit in my car until I'm seen. I, you know, it just didn't occur to me. I'm just uh, kind of, um, my brain just does not work on a normal basis. But being in the pain that I'm in, I was not functioning very well. And I was just like, you know what? Okay, so I get in my car, and I'm sitting there, and I call, and I'm like, hello, I'm here, I need to be seen, I've hurt my back. Which I know telling them that I did this or did that is in vain because when I go in, I'm going to have to tell the nurse. And then when I get done telling the nurse, a doctor's going to come in and she's going to say, well, what's brought you here? So I'm going to have to tell the story three times when I, by the time I'm seen, I got to tell the story three times to make sure that I get my lie straight, so to speak, and, and make sure that they fully comprehend, you know, and, and when I was finally getting ready to go in to be seen, um, this guy came up with a swollen knee, looked like he had fallen, so his knee was swollen like a baseball bat. They wouldn't let him even go into the little waiting area and sit down with a pack of ice. They never even came out and asked him if he wanted any ice for his knee. For some reason, the two of them stood up out there talking in the rain. I don't know why. Luckily, it wasn't pouring down rain, but it was raining, okay? So they're standing out, out there waiting to be seen, and the lady I know told them that I was next. Because when I went there, they said there was one other lady ahead of me, and she was or had already left. So I knew it was just a matter of a few seconds they would come out and see me. So I'm sitting there, and I'm watching these poor guys stand there, and this poor guy's knees sticking out like a football. And I finally, I just asked him, I said, are you, are you guys from this area? Because where I live, there are, um, it's a tourist area because of the beach. And so come to find out, they weren't even from this area. So I proceeded to tell them, listen, there's two medical facilities that are urgent care that you can go to um, if you would like. Because I said, I don't understand, number one, why they didn't even offer you an ice pack for you to sit in your truck with the ice pack on your knee. Because your knee is sticking out like a, a country mile and your injury, he was bleeding. So evidently, he must have fallen. And I says, and number two, I don't understand why they won't even let you sit in the lobby with a mask on. There were no people in there. There was nobody in there. It was completely vacant. They could have let him and his friend go sit in a chair so this guy could prop his leg and put some ice on his knee. They didn't even bother to offer. But, oh, they'll take their insurance and their money, okay, in a minute. So I told them there were two places they could go, either end. They could go to the right or they could go to the left, and I told them where the places were at. So they ended up leaving. I said, well, just don't tell them in there that I told you, you know, about the other places because I didn't want them to get mad at me, whatever. But I was like, it's a shame for them to stand out there and here I am you know I'm, I, I'm okay I'm in my car I don't understand again why the two guys didn't go into their car and wait but still I just thought it was rude well when the girl came out she took my temp she took my um pulse up she um you know did all that asked me some pertinent questions regarding the, the coronavirus but then she turned around and she goes okay well you can come in now so she steps up in the curb she goes inside she, and the door closes and I get out of my car and I stand there for like I'm not kidding you, probably about five, seven minutes, gathering my wits, trying to stop shaking, trying to manage to straighten up enough to take a couple steps to step up onto the sidewalk to get into the facility. And she, of course, not having any kind of ailment or any kind of injury, she just briskly walks into the facility and the door closes behind her. And it was one of those big double doors and she didn't even offer to hold the door for me, nothing didn't offer to help me get out of the car, um, knowing that I was there for a back injury, um, she didn't offer, I mean, I want to be coddled, because I'll tell you why I want to be coddled, because, first of all, my husband works his fingers to the bone to buy insurance, so I can have medical attention, we have not always had medical insurance, we have been very fortunate in that we have managed to get through life without medical insurance, 
And it wasn't until just a few years back that my husband got medical insurance. For mainly, for, well, for both of us, but now he's at the age where he's um, not doing the regular medical, he's on Medicaid. But I'm on medical insurance, but we haven't always had it. So my husband works his fingers to the bone to pay for me to have insurance. Plus I pay a copay when I go in there, plus whatever deductible whenever that time comes. So I'm thinking, okay, I think I deserve a little bit better treatment than just for you to come out to my car and just look at me as if I'm a non-entity for one. No sympathy. I know it's miserable. I know it's raining outside. I know you've been in and out, in and out, but I'm sorry. You, that's your job. If you want to be a nurse, then be a nurse. So she's, you know, doing her thing, but she just walks off, doesn't even help me out of the car doesn't help me open the door, which I had to open the door, which I'm not kidding. That was an act of Congress with my back the way it was. I mean, it was hunched over. I'm not kidding you now. So I go in there, and I finally, you know, managed to get myself seated, and I'm moving like molasses on a cold day going uphill. And I hate to be negative. I really, really do. I hate to be negative. And, but it's just like, honey, I know people are under stress. I know people are miserable. I know people are not making... The, the financial statuses that they've had in the past because of the coronavirus. People are suffering. I know that. And I respect that. But I'm just like, oh my goodness. So I had determined, I said, you know what? I'm tired when I go in to be seen. At 63 years of age, I'm not a drug addict. I am tired of them patty caking around by saying, okay, we're going to give you Tylenol. We're going to give you ibuprofen. And we're going to, um, we're going to, you know, this or that. And I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm done with ibuprofen. I'm done with, with, um, you know, Tylenol. I would take Tylenol stuff every single day for migraines that I get every morning when I wake up. I very seldom wake up without a headache. So that is part of my routine. I'm probably killing my liver, but you know, I take the three Tylenols at least a couple times a day. Okay. So I probably take six Tylenols every single day along with my blood pressure medicine and whatever else. Okay. So um, now, um, and of course, I'm going to be maybe starting shots um, soon, I hope, uh, for once a month shots for the migraines that keep coming all the time. I mean, if it's not the migraines, it's something else. But, you know, and it's fine. I'm basically a very healthy person. I have no allergies. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do any of that, really. Um, you know, I don't abuse, I don't drink a lot of carbonated drinks, whatever, I don't eat a lot of candy, a lot of sweets, I don't eat a lot of, I have no cholesterol issues at all, zero cholesterol issues. Um, so for being 63, soon to be 64 in January, I, I think I'm okay. But I'm like, I want, I want something a little more aggressive than Tylenol and ibuprofen, okay? Can I please have a, something a little more aggressive? I'm not saying you got to give me a 30-day supply or a 90-day supply of, you know, opiate medication. I just want something other than Tylenol and ibuprofen. So she ended up giving me some cortisone, um, some kind of pills, and a muscle relaxer, which I have no clue what the muscle relaxer is. I have no clue. It doesn't seem to do anything um, as far as it doesn't make me sleepy or have restless leg syndrome or any of that kind of junk. So it must be very mild, but that's fine. At least it's better than Tylenol and ibuprofen. So while all this is going on for the past month um, or longer, well, we lost our dog. We had a lab, chocolate lab, uh, for 14, 15 years, and he finally passed away, and he was mainly my husband's dog. And so my husband, of course, was devastated, but I got it in my brain that I was going to eventually replace or not replace, but find another dog for my husband. Because the dog we had lab stayed with my husband at his workplace, whereas my dog, Roxanne, who is the same age as Skye, well, the same age as Sky was, but she's older now because he died a few months back, and she's still kicking. But she's mixed, whereas Skye, Skye was a full-blooded, she's a um, Pekingese uh, Chihuahua mix, and Skye was full-blooded lab. And full-blooded thoroughbred dogs I hate to say, I love them, they're beautiful, there's all breeds, we've had them all, we've had chows, we've had shepherds, we've had, you know, um, what do you call those, uh, uh, um, dogs that have the blue eyes, real pretty, um, uh, we've had them all, but, um, so I had been looking, thinking, well, I might 
buying him a lamp as a surprise. Well, Father's Day is coming up this Sunday, so I'm thinking in my mind, you know, I, I gotta find my husband a dog. So I'm looking online, and they want like anywhere from eight hundred to a thousand dollars or more for lab puppies. And I'm sure cost is contingent on the color, like there's the black lab, the chocolate lab, you know, um, the different color labs. And uh, I'm like, oh, I can't afford that. Well, with the coronavirus, all the animal shelters are limited at this point. I have yet to been co be contacted by any of the shelters that I've tried to contact regarding adopting even an older dog. I thought well, it might be easier if I just get a little bit of an, maybe a young dog, maybe six months and over. But none of the shelters would respond. And of course, a lot of them were closed. And then also a lot of them, thank God, and I was very happy to hear that, that a lot of the animals were being um, adopted. Because I guess people staying home, you know, because I guess, I guess people get lonely maybe. I don't know what the deal is. But a lot of the animals were being adopted out, which was a wonderful thing. So then I decided I'm just going to wait and see what comes up. And I did inquire about a few puppies. But um, this one particular situation, um, this girl had puppies that were, um, they were seven, seven weeks old at the 14th, which was what, yesterday is when I got the dog. And when I named him Ace, but he is a um, Mastiff and a um, Pit, no, he's a Mastiff and he's a Bulldog something mix. The mom was a smaller dog, Bulldog um, mix, but she doesn't look like a Bulldog. She has no flat features, none, none of no feature. I don't know where the bulldog thing came in. I, I have no clue because the mother was much smaller than the dad, which is a mastiff. He was a mastiff. And I know there's different types of mastiff, but he didn't have a really super droopy face, but um, he was a big dog. So, and he was kind of blondish color with a darker facial features. Well, the mom, like I said, was pretty small. And she said something about this, the puppies were um, a mix of um, boxer and um, whatever, but like I said, I question that. It looked more like the, I don't even know really what kind of pup, uh, breed the mother was, but she looked sweet. She was definitely smaller. I don't know how the Mastiff managed to get hooked up with her and make babies. I, I really don't know how that happened because she was such a, so much smaller. And she had a nice size litter of puppies. She had, I think, maybe six. And, um, but the dog that I've, um, picked through conversing with this girl. She was giving the puppies away. They had no shots yet. They weren't even old enough to be treated for, um, uh, you know, fleas or any of that yet. It's still too young. When I contacted her, and I contacted her, contacted her two weeks, two and a half weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think. Something. I'm sorry, I'm rambling, but y'all forgive me because I do have these muses that come out. I have different. Sometimes I'm so, I can't even hardly lift my voice to even speak, and other times I'm hyper, and it seems like tonight, last couple of nights I've been really hyper, but it's probably because I'm starting to feel a little bit better, even though my back still aches, it aches now, it's not in severe pain, I've been able to do dishes and do some laundry and stuff, but I'm overdoing it, like, like we women always do, when we start feeling better, we just take it for granted, and we just keep running, but, um, so, but the thing is, you know, I was really, I, I worked myself up emotionally regarding this transaction with this puppy because I started watching like YouTube videos of people who lost beloved pets that they'd had for 18, 20 years, 15 years, 16 years, 10 years, you know, nine years, however long. And if you're a true animal lover, you know, your pets become part of your family. So I, um, you know, was watching all this sentimental stuff, you know, with the puppies and how that the older parents were, would, you know, they would be given the puppy and they would cry and everybody was happy and it just was so beautiful and, you know, so I romanticized that part of it, watching all these YouTube videos. And then I got all excited thinking, oh, my husband's going to be so excited and he's going to be so happy you know, and so overjoyed, but yet he's probably going to cry, and he's not going to, you know, but he's he's not an overly emotional sort of guy. I mean, you, you know, it really takes a lot for him to display any kind of emotion, and, and, and 
good or bad, really. He's, he gets very quiet. When he's upset, he gets doubly quiet. Um, if something bad happens, like, um, not angry, but, like, if he gets, like, something really tragic, his color changes on his face, and he gets, like, really quiet. And then other times when he's mad or preoccupied, he's just quiet, you know, just kind of quiet. He, he doesn't really have spontaneous, um, you know, bursts of emotion. Um, it's hard for him for some reason. And I guess it's the way he was raised because his mom was like that. She was very... The only thing his mom ever did, and I love her, don't get me wrong, and she's gone now, but she could chew gum like you would not. She, that was the only thing she did. I used to tell my husband that was uninhibited. She would chomp that gum and snap that gum and pop that gum and smack. My mother, who has a serious mental issue with, like, smacking, there's a term for it. There is actually a mental term for people who cannot stand here, people chew or smack or whatever. My mother has that. She would have driven my mother to suicide if she was in the same room. My mother-in-law would drive my mother to suicide if she could hear it, the way she smacked her gum. My mother-in-law didn't even eat like she smacked gum. I mean, this woman <laughs> was like in her own little world. And you would have thought, she, God help me, I'm sorry to say it, back in the hippie days when they took speed, you would have sworn she had a pack of gum and some speed and had taken it and was chomping down on that gum. But I said all that to say, for whatever reason, my husband doesn't know how to show a lot of emotions. So I was already lopsided in my perspective of how he was going to respond. Knowing how he is, I should have known better. So here I hurt my back, and just coincidentally, and you know, just the way things work out for me, um, I had to go pick the puppy up on the 14th which I thought, Lord, if my back is still out of whack, I am going to have a hard time. Because the drive to get the puppy, even though the puppy was free, was way out in the country in what is known as Richlands, North Carolina. And me and my granddaughter drove, using GPS, all the way through um, Newport, Swansboro, you know, Cape Carteret, Swansboro, all the way to, through Jacksonville, Onslow County, all the way through, all the way through till we hit Richlands. Then once we hit Richlands, it was way in the country. I mean, way in the country to get to this puppy. So we get the puppy, and we, of course, visit, and I'm asking questions, and, you know, this, that, and the other. And, and the puppies, all of, they had a beautiful farm-like area there. And I really liked it out there. It was very isolated, and they had a lot of dogs. But all the dogs looked healthy. All They had old dogs. They had young dogs. But it wasn't like... Um, uh, junkyard dogs that you could tell that the dogs were well cared for and there was one puppy left besides the, the one I picked out for my husband and it was a coffee colored female um, and she definitely had a lot of the mastiff uh, traits even more than Ace the dog I picked out. Ace is black and he's got white and that's why I named him Ace. If you look up in the dictionary the meaning of the word A-C-E there's several definitional connotations to that word and it fits that dog to a T. And also, it reminds me of when my granddaughter, Nevaeh, was born. She had she was Hispanic, so she had pure black hair with blonde tips on each piece of her hair. On each, She didn't get bathed when she was born, so her hair was sticking straight up all over. She was real hairy because she was Hispanic, and her hair was sticking up all over the place. But on each segment of dark hair, she had a tip of blonde and the dog, Ace, has, he's black, and the tip of his tail is white. The very tip is white. He's got white um, under his paws, and, you know, he's got a little bit of white, but he's mainly black. And um, so black, you can't even see the color of his eyes. You can't hardly even see his eyes. Um, he's got more of the white is underneath his, um, you know, he's not got a lot of white. It's almost, I don't know, how would I describe it? Because he's asleep right now, and I don't want to wake him up. He is, yeah, he's got um, black front paws and white boots on the uh, back part of his uh, paws. So he's got white boots and a white tip. So if you look at a deck of cards, Ace of Spades, got what's known as a bit, I think it's called a bit, little white thing in the middle. So the word, the name Ace just came to me. I didn't know the full connotation of what the word Ace meant. 
Um, is the dog waking up, Roxanne? Oh, Nevada? Huh? I think the dog's waking up. Don't come into the video, but just let's see. He's getting a leash No, leave him alone. Let me see. He's just like a newborn baby. Oh my God, it's like, please don't wake up the dog. Don't wake up the dog. Don't wake up the dog. <laughs> it's like, but he is doing a lot of playing and he's also doing a lot of sleeping. Let's see if I can move this. Maybe I can show you what he looks like. Let me see. If I don't screw up the... Can you see him? I'm going to turn him this way. There he is. See the little white tip on his tail? And then he's got, um, you can't see it now because he's got his little feet. Oops, oops, oops. He's got his feet tucked in, but he's got black boots in the front, and then he's got white boots in the back. And he's got white right under his chin. So anyway, but I named him Ace, thinking about black. It just came to my mind. Ace, Ace of Spades. So I'm thinking that's a good name for him. I'm going to try to move this closer. Okay, keep looking up because I'm not used to so, um, anyway, so I had to do all this driving, and, and like I said, it's been raining, it's been nasty, it was, you know, but I mean, luckily, the rain, um, getting to the rain, I guess I'm premature in saying, it didn't rain yesterday in route, but because I hurt my back, I was not able to do all the things that I needed to do to get prepared for the dog because we were supposed to meet at five o'clock but then she said well I'm going to be in Richlands at 11 if you want to come and so I was like oh yeah let me get dressed let me get my you know let me get my shower let me get dressed and I had to go get my granddaughter and I says and we'll be on our way so I had to rush my efforts to leave the house because I would much rather drive to Richlands during the day at 11 o'clock than go at 5 o'clock at night, which is when we were supposed to meet. And probably by the time we got back, it would be black, it would be dark, and it would be late because it ended up working out good because me and Nevaeh drove um, and got the puppy. And like I said, he has some he has some sores. He's going to the vet um, tomorrow. My daughter's going to help me um, pay for the vet because she pays me to take care of the grandkids anyway, but I just she's just gonna take money and put it towards the vet. And we're gonna go get his uh, first set of shots, his deworming, whatever package for puppies. We're gonna do all that. And he does have some sores, but the lady said it's not mange and they don't look bloody, they're not blistery, they're healing. But I think she said the other dogs playing with the, the puppies and stuff, they were getting um, you know, cut up and scratched and stuff. So I don't know, I don't know. But that was the first question I asked when I saw the puppy. The puppy's free, but he didn't act like he's sick. He looked healthy, so I was like, okay. Well, um, I had been watching his bowels, and this dog is peeing and pooping outside, doing so well. However, um, leaving Richlands, he did cry for a, a bit, which was somewhat nerve-wracking because, and I knew, I expected all this. And here it is, my back, okay? So when I got to the place to get the dog, I couldn't get out of the car right away because I told her I hurt my back and it's going to take me a few minutes. So I, you know, managed to get the kinks out and then I was okay. And there was some history with the dog because the girl that, um, the girl and I that we had, you know, been talking together and collaborating with the puppy, um, her brother was her twin and he died of an overdose and she, um, he was only 33 years old when he passed away. And she was, you know, they were twins. And so the puppy, the Mastiff, I believe it was the Mastiff that belonged to her brother. And so she said the puppies really meant a lot to her. If it didn't work out to bring the puppy back, she did not want the puppy to go back to the pound. And I assured her in my romanticized, you know, magic colored glasses that my husband was going to be thoroughly consumed with love and and, and, and overwhelmed by the cuteness of this new dog. The assay is not going to happen. I won't take the dog to the pound, which I wouldn't anyway. And even if I didn't give the dog back to her, which I told her that if 
it didn't work out, you know, I says, highly unlikely that it won't work out, but I said, if it doesn't work out, I'll just, I'll bring the dog back, but if I didn't bring the dog back, I definitely wouldn't put him to the pound anyway, I would try to find a home, and whoever got him would be blessed, because um, not only, after we left, and he did cry for a bit, and he did finally fall asleep, we went to, went through Jacksonville to come back home, and we stopped off at the five and above, five and below store, whatever it's called, and found, you know, his um, furry bed to sleep in, his little doggy bed. And in the meantime, I had been chatting with a guy who had a medium-sized dog cage, excellent condition for 20 bucks. And this guy and I went back and forth and back and forth. I don't know, he said, if I'm going to be available, I got to do this, I got to do that, da 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 and he was military, and I had, you know, so I went to, through Jacksonville, which is military, Marine Corps, and I was like, oh my God, you know, he lived in low, lower ranking uh, military housing, and back in the day when my stepfather was in the military, in the Marine Corps, for that particular area, you didn't have to go through base uh, to get a pass, you know, and so when I pulled up, the, the Marine, you know, dictated or indicated I need to pull over, he came over and I told him, you know, what I was doing. And he said, well, you're going to have to go on base. I'm like, oh, my God. Well, you're talking about, like, turning around, going another 15, 20 miles. I'm not doing it. So I said, well, can I call the person? And, and he said, well, you can park over here. He was very nice. He said, you can call this person if you'd like, and they can meet you here at the gate, and you can make the exchange. And I said, hey, that's a good idea. So that's what I did. Well, the guy wouldn't answer the phone. He did, Or he didn't answer the phone. He was busy. He was out and about. So, well, lo and behold, push come to shove, push come to shove, I finally got irritated, and I thought, well, this guy just doesn't seem to want because I said, I'll call you going to Jacksonville, and I'll call you coming out of Jacksonville. Okay, either way, I'm giving you, like, hours to be able to determine when we can meet today. You know, you want to sell this dog crate or not, you know? Finally, I got to the point, I said, okay. I said, you know what? I said, I says, good luck selling the dog cage. I said, um, I, 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 I'll just look somewhere else. And... I said, good luck, I, I appreciate it, and I says, just forget it, um, but I said, but I am, you know, I says, but I am, you know, coming through Jacksonville now, and he said, finally, he said, well, you know what, he goes, I'm going to be at the food line on what's known as Piney Green Road on 24 side, because there's two sides, it's a straight shot, and you've got 17 side, and you got 24 side, well, I'm taking 24 to head back home, down east, to go to, you know, near Atlantic Beach, Morehead, okay, so I says, he goes, I'm at, gonna be at the food line, would you, can you meet there, because this was like, I almost thought I lost the deal, and I'm just like, oh my god, yes, I said, what side of Piney Green, because I was on 17 side, which was two seconds from where he would have been, if that's where he was at, but he was on 24 side, which took me another 10 minutes to get there, and I'm like, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way, so I finally got there, he knew what color car I was driving, and all that jazz, and we parked in front of uh, Family Dollar so my granddaughter could run in and get one of those dollar bandanas because I had to buy uh, Ace toys, you know, little toys to chew on. I had to get him, I wanted to get him a bandana. I had to stop off the Dollar Tree and get a, a balloon that said Happy Father's Day. I, I had to get a card from the grandkids and, my, and from myself from the Dollar Tree. I had all these last minute things that I had to gather and my money was dwindling and dwindling, and I finally knew I had just enough money to buy this $20 dog crate. And if I didn't get the dog crate, I thought, well, I'm going to have enough money to get the dog dog food. Because I'm not going to buy, I don't buy, I'm not a snob when it comes to dog food, but I'm not going to feed my dog Old Roy or some other kind of dog food um, front that looked really, 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 really cheap. Or to the point where what this dog was eating when I got to the lady's house rice cooked rice with maybe chicken soup in it or something I don't know what it was but it was rice she you know and and I just was like uh, it was table food and I thought okay that's fine if they feed their dogs table food they all looked healthy but I wasn't gonna feed this puppy table food um, not not a puppy you know so I said well and I know some dogs do live I had a brother whose dog lived way in old age long time and he did not eat dog food he ate people food a lot of people actually I have another friend who's got a dog matter of fact she cooks the meat for the dog she cooks steak and stuff like that for her dog so hey you know but this puppy was going to go on the puppy chow stuff 
So, um, but I was getting low on money, but we finally met and I was like, he goes, well, I'm here and I don't see you. And I'm like, I'm here, explanation mark, right in front of Family Dollar, which is right next door to Food Lion. So thank God he pulled up and it was some guy, some Marine, but I was so upset in my mind. I thought, I'm just going to offer this guy $15, you know? I'm just going to offer him $15 for all the trouble I've been through because I've stopped at Midway Park where he lived, right at the gate, the base. I've, ca I've talked to him. I've emailed. I've texted him. I've done everything. I mean, it's been a back and forth. My efforts have been grandiose. I have been way over and above, you know, trying to get this dog crate. I'm like, oh, my God. And, you know, I don't want to go to Walmart and spend 60 bucks on a dog crate when I can get it for 20 You know, I I'm just trying to be practical. But I had to do all of this last minute stuff. I'm saying all this because I had hurt my back. So I got the dog crate, but I didn't get to clean it until this morning. And of course it's pouring down rain and I dropped the thing on my toe and I'm bleeding. I was bleeding, my back hurt. I don't know, I just felt really old. I felt like I was 100 years old. These last three days I have felt like I was 100 years old. So yesterday was the big day though. And so went to my daughter's and we wrapped up a box with paper. Oh, and that was nothing when I went to the Dollar Tree. I walk in, the store scarce because everything comes from China. Okay, that's fine. I love Dollar Tree. And I have noticed many of the other dollars, some are well stocked and I'm not quite sure what the deal is. So why would one store be very well stocked and yet another one not hardly be stocked at all? It has to do with management. Something is not right. So, but I'm like, okay, so I go in there with the purpose of buying a Father's Day balloon and a card, you know, and all that jazz. And I go in there and I get to talking to a lady that's in there getting so distracted. We were having fun. I think that was the only time I could say the whole day it was really fun, fun. Because uh, we were talking about the different crafts that you can make using, you know, Dollar Tree stuff and everything. And um, really cheap but yet nice looking craft stuff but anyway so i go up to pay for my stuff and everything and i'm like the store's really scarce and one of the guys that was working in there on the floor was an older guy but he looked so miserable and i made the comment i said you know i said how cool is it that in a way this is kind of cool that you can you know i know the cabinets uh, the shelves are kind of bare but i said it's kind of cool because that gives you an opportunity to you know get everything all straight and organized before the trucks really start rolling in with all the goods and you know everything gets back to normal as far as restocking you know the store and he just kind of looked at me and was like like okay whatever and I'm like okay hmm happy man here loves his job which I would love to work at Dollar Tree again I used to work there before I helped set up our Dollar Tree here in Moorhead City the very first Dollar Tree there ever came town you'd have thought that we had sent a man to the moon from Carteret County, the way everybody was so excited. Oh my God, Dollar Tree's come to Carteret County. Oh Lord. We didn't have a Walmart. We didn't have nothing. We didn't have anything in this town. And here come Dollar Tree. Everybody was having a cow. So I worked there. But I love Dollar Tree though because I do find a lot of good stuff. But I've noticed there's such a world of difference between how well stocked some of them are. And some of the Dollar Trees were coming out with this $5 thing trying to do the five dollar out do the five dollar store thing five dollars seems cheap but it's still kind of expensive when everything is five dollars some things are less but you know it still adds up so when i got ace all his toys and then we went to dollar tree like i said i'm walking around there was a young boy that was at the register and he's on the phone his cell phone and he's talking to his girlfriend and the reason i know that is because i could overhear his conversation because he's standing at the register talking to his girlfriend and then there was a girl standing behind him who was an employee that I guess was either just coming in and she must have been um, either just clocking in or whatever I, I really don't know what was going on she looked like she might have been above him a little bit maybe he, she was like one of the managers I don't really know but I looked at him and I kind of said with a smile but I was serious I'm like are you talking on the cell phone while you're on the clock aren't you supposed to be working instead of chatting to your girlfriend on the phone? 
I said, you're on Dollar Tree time, son. And, and I smiled at him, and he kind of smiled back at me, but I was like, mm. I said, I think maybe you better get yourself off that phone and get to work. And I guess it kind of embarrassed him a little, and I, you know, I wasn't mean about it, but I was kind of like, hey, hello, why are you talking to your girlfriend on the cell phone? And this was like a little chit-chat, chit-chat. This wasn't like, oh, honey, please bring home some uh, milk for the, for the baby. Or, oh, honey, you know, uh, I had a flat tire. When you get off work, go come help me. You know, one, one of those kind of phone calls. It was like, uh, yeah, uh-huh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're not real busy right now. Anyway, you know. And I'm just standing there. Yeah, uh-huh. And then the girl's standing behind him, and she goes, well, who are you talking? He said, talking to my girlfriend. And that's when I finally looked at him. I was like, hey, are you? talking to your girlfriend on the cell phone on company time on Dollar Tree time are you clocked in are you working off are you working on the clock or off the clock what what what's you know hello hello <laughs> Lord God help me do y'all think I'm losing my mind I think I'm losing my mind I've been homebound too long so anyway so I get to my daughter's and we wrap the box up and of course we made it to where the box would just slip over top the dog's bed and because uh, you know we didn't want to put him in the box to suffocate the poor thing but my husband came in and you know I'm just so I'm so nervous and I'm just and I'm so tense and I'm so frantic and I'm, and I'm on this stupid cortisone stuff which makes me hyper I, or whatever it is what do you call it it's, is it cortisone? I guess it's cortisone, prednisone. I don't know what it's called, but it makes me really hyper, which is probably why I'm hyper now, because I have to take it, and I still got plenty to take, believe me. But I didn't even sleep. Matter of fact, that's nothing. I didn't even go to sleep last night. I did not sleep one week last night. I was wide awake. I was not tired. I wasn't yawning, nothing. After all of that, well, the climatic issue of the day for me was we go through all this. We put the balloon on the, um, yeah, y'all know how, come on now, y'all get real with me here. You know how stressful it is. Like my granddaughter opens the car door and I'm like, don't let the helium balloon blow out the door. And it's like, put this here and help me with that. I need you. Da, 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 da. It was like chaotic. It's starting to get very stressful. And then I go to my daughter's house and then she just takes over and she's just this, this and that. And I'm like, and I just start snapping back at her because I was like, that's what that stuff does to me. That cortisone mess makes me crazy. And so, and I know a lot of people might dispute that, but it, I'm very hypersensitive to some things and very um, resistant to others. I'm very resistant to lidocaine, but certain other things, you know, really hit me. So, and cortisone stuff and shots make me hyper. Not for a long, long, long time, but, you know, it just kicks into my system and I'm like a crazy person or something. But... <laughs> So I'm just like, okay, so we're trying to do all this last minute thing, and I'm, then it was like compelling uh, a turd out of a septic tank to get my husband to come over to my daughter's house, if you'll excuse the term, to try to, to compel him, babe, come on over to Ashley's, because she lives right across the street. I mean, he could walk to her house. It is a little bit of a walk, but not much. It's a five-minute drive. It's not even a five-minute drive. It's a three-minute drive. And what do you want me to come over there for? And I'm like, I need you to come on over. Kids have a surprise. Uh, well, I, I, my back hurts. I've been working all day. He tells, he texts all this, and I know how he talks. My back hurts, and I've been, I've been working. I've been working all day. I'm tired. I don't, you know, I'm like Dave. And he's not home yet, mind you, because when we dr did drive by the house, because I have to drive by my house to get to their house, the truck wasn't even in the driveway, so he's still at work. And I'm like, Dave, it only take 15 minutes. You don't have to stay. Just come on. I wanted to do it at their house because I have a bird here that screams like someone's being murdered, and it's very high loud, decimal. If you've ever heard a cockatoo scream and squawk and yell, you'll understand. And then the dog starts crying, and my dog, Roxanne, starts crying and screaming and fussing when the bird goes off. And I knew it would be nothing but confusion because my house, even though it's big, bigger, much bigger than my daughter's house, my kitchen is, she just has more room because she doesn't have as much clutter 
and everything going on in her apartment and and there's no animals nothing to distract so we did it at her house so it took everything pulling out eye teeth convincing molasses molasses to go uphill on a cold day frozen molasses to go uphill on a cold winter day that's what it took pulling eye teeth compelling a turd out of the septic i mean everything to get this man to come to my daughter's house finally i just gave up and i was like you know what if you don't come whatever and i knew i would be very very hurt and disappointed which i don't know why i would worry about that because i ended up being hurt anyway and i hate to say it because we're supposed to, we're christians and i guess i i was at my wit's end because i was in pain I was exhausted. I was going on nervous energy. Plus, I had romanticized all of this in my head, and I, I thought I had on rose-colored glasses, and I perceived that it was going to be a certain kind of way, and the reception was the total opposite. So here he comes, and everybody's excited. Everybody got their cameras out. Everybody's got the cell phone out. My daughter's got her cell phone. My son-in-law's got his. I got my computer hooked up. Everybody's, my, even my granddaughter's got her cell phone going. We're all excited. And we're sitting there, and Dad, is, or Papa, he walks in the door, and he looks around. He can tell something's up. But like I said, he's a man of few words and a man of few emotions. And so, I'm um, like, and I could hear myself in the background. I was really, really winded, and I was just like super nervous. And I could just tell I was overwrought just by the way I was talking and the way I was breathing and just everything. And it was just, I don't know. I just put a burden on myself that I shouldn't have done. But anyway, so we get him to read one card because everybody's freaking out that the puppy's going to suffocate. So I made him open the card I wrote him. And he didn't even finish reading the card because I proceeded to tell him in the card how special this puppy was because the young man who owned the father of this puppy had OD'd. And when I, before I left, I did say to the young girl before I left, I asked her, I said, would, would you mind if I impose on your privacy? And I said, you mentioned your twin brother died. And I said, and at first I thought it was maybe at birth, but then I realized, well, no, because the dog belonged to, one of the dogs belonged to the brother. So it couldn't have been that long ago. And I said, how did he pass away? And she shared her story a, a little bit about how he died. And I looked at her and I says, can I give you a hug? And I says, can I pray for you? And as soon as I did, she burst out crying. And I prayed for her. I did not care. I did not care what anybody thought. I didn't care what anybody said. I just prayed for her. I didn't shout and speak in tongues and act like a fool, but I definitely let her know that you were, that not you, but Jesus was aware, God was aware of her pain and sorrow and, and that I had compassion in my soul for her loss and I wish that I could find the magic words to make it better for her, but I just, I said the only thing that we can express during those times are tears. That's all we can do. So, um, so I had that written in the card, you know, very briefly written, nothing, you know, lengthy, but he didn't even hardly finish reading the card when he looked at me, and he says, I can't believe you got me a dog. That's what he said. And I just kind of looked at him, batted my eyes, and pretended I didn't hear what he said, and we pulled the box, you know, he pulled the box off, and there was the puppy, and I'm telling you in the video, I had to ask him 20 times, honey, pick up the puppy, pick up the puppy, look at the puppy, look how cute he is, isn't he adorable, and everybody's like, yeah, dad, look at, you know, and we're trying to rib him on, and he's just standing there, well, I thought maybe he was crying at first, and he was real, um, like, aloof, and, and just, unsure and he just didn't want to react at all i mean he was like he's cardboard like spit on the wall or something i mean there was absolutely no reaction he was he wouldn't even look at anybody he wouldn't even look at me he wouldn't i don't know and i told nevaeh i says you know nevaeh i says when we we're coming home i said if your papa hurts my feelings over this you know i said you need to tell papa that nanny's praying that god would put some laughter in his heart that I'm really praying that God will put some laughter in his heart. And it seems like I'm making myself out to be Miss Spirituality, but I'm not. Because he's the one that's been very consistent about staying, you know, with the Lord over the years and this, that, and the other. And I'm the one that left. I'm the one that walked out from away from God for almost 15 years. 
And I was in church for years and years and years, and living for God for years, people, years, before I walked away from God. And so it seems like I'm all spiritual, but I'm not. I'm, I'm going day by day. But, and I know that he's grateful for my effort to, you know, get myself situated, but, and he, I know he, he's, he doesn't take for granted because he sees how it was when I wasn't living for God. And we never separated over it. I mean, we've been married since 1974. We've never, you know, been apart that way. But it's still hard when one partner is committed to the Lord and the other one has kind of gotten upset and angry at God and walked away for a, like a good number of years. I didn't think I would ever come back to God. But, you know, so I told Nabea, I said, you know, your papa needs to get some laughter in his heart. The Bible says, you know, and, and scripture talks about my burden is light. My load is easy, my burden is light. In other words, God says, trade, you know, the, the cares of this world and the burdens of this world with what I can give you because my burden is light, my yoke is easy. And, and it talks about he put laughter in my heart, he put peace in my heart. And I, I know we can't walk around on cloud nine all the time, bad things are gonna happen, but we don't have to constantly, 24 seven, live in a dark shadow. I'm not perfect, like I just said, all of this that I've just said, I'm not perfect. But it's like, I don't know, he just, he. so after we videoed everything and everybody did their little video thing or whatever, my daughter-in-law even called, she was like, oh, I'm so excited. And she lives five minutes up the street, her and my son and, and their two dogs and everything, and my granddaughter. And she's like, let us know what happened. Let us know what happened. I'm so excited. Send me the video. da dee da dee da I'm like, okay, no problem. That's what I'll do. Well, I end up bawling my eyes out. And I'm talking bawling my eyes out because after the camera shut down, after the videos shut down after everybody put their phones away after everything shut down my husband finally made eye contact and looked at me and said I told you not to get me a, a dog I'm not ready for a dog he said I'm not ready for a puppy you need to take it back I don't want it you need to take where'd you get this dog and he's you know just and she, like I said, he had some sores on him from not oozing bloody pussy sores, just scab from playing with the other dogs and the puppies and the bigger dogs. And then there was an older dog there that, um, you know, but he, he was finding fault. Well, he, this dog looks like he's sick. He looks like he's got something wrong with him. He's got these, what's going on? You, you need to take it back. I, I don't want it. I'm not, I told you, I'm not ready for a dog. I'm not ready for it. I mean, just as cold and indifferent. And I just looked at him and I, I thought, and so I looked at Ashley and I said, you know, this is, this is exactly what I knew would happen. I knew, I knew. And, and yet for some reason I put on these rose colored glasses and got myself all worked up watching all these beautiful YouTube videos of these people receiving these beautiful, baby puppies and little you know all these replacements of family members doing something beautiful because I kept and I said to David you know I said I said I just can't believe it I says well I, I, I says you know what I says I'm not taking the dog I'm not taking the puppy back I said I'm not taking it back he's going to stay here how are you going to pay for how you you know and I, I said David I get my little bit of social security every month. I says what little bit I get, which is pennies. Pennies, people. I will pay for his going to the vet and whatever. And I just, I start to cry. And I cried and I cried. My son-in-law, being full-blood Hispanic, you know, he's kind of, he's quiet, but he's not quiet, but he is quiet. He doesn't always voice the inside of what his heart is thinking, but I think he was hurting for me so bad. I know he was. And then my husband's like, well, now I'm the bad guy. Now my whole family thinks I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. You know, and I'm like, Dave. And so I was trying to be um, diplomatic. And I did let slip one 
cuss word, but I don't even think it was. I mean, I guess you can't measure cuss words, but I think I said D-A-M. I'm not sure. But I caught myself and thought, I'm not going to a higher level and bring myself even more um, low than I already felt, you know. I, and, and I was just hurting, but I just, something in me knew. And it wasn't that I was defying his request about the puppy and not getting another dog. It wasn't really that. It was it was just, I kept thinking, this was such a beautiful, thoughtful thing I thought I was doing for him. And he was like, I'm trying to simplify my life. I'm trying to make my life, you know, less complicated. Okay, so I was like, okay, I understand that. I respect that. Yeah. And he's going to have to go potty. Come here, puppy, while I'm here. So, <laughs> he just lifted him by the Did you put the put that? Look, here he is. No, get out of the video. I'm not in the video. Yeah, you are. You're in it right now. Don't. Sorry. You can't because it's. Say hello. Get your butt out of the video. Sorry. So, you look it. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. Look. Puppy, puppy. Oh, no, cute. So cute. Yes. You're going to have to take him out because it's too dark for me. You think I'm going to potty. So, anyway, this beautiful puppy is not going anywhere. So I made a nice spaghetti dinner for dinner tonight, and he was subdued, and I was subdued, and we didn't bicker and argue and fuss, but I will tell you, because the puppy's got to go potty. We don't go get the leash for me, at least. Um, let me cover while she hurries and runs. But needless to say, the puppy's not going anywhere, but he's got to go potty. He's telling mommy he's got to go potty, so we're going to go potty. But anyway, um, so he did try to play with the puppy tonight and stuff maybe he feels bad but i don't know he hasn't said a whole lot about it but my my heart was broken yesterday i really cried and my son-in-law give me your shoe there's a huge cockroach my son-in-law um felt sorry for me and he said something to my daughter under his breath quietly to her and she said be quiet eladio because and i said well i said i can and i was crying and i said well, let me just say this before I close. I says, he's probably the only one that fully understands and realizes how hurt I am. But my daughter is going to help me take the dog to the vet and everything and help me pay for it. So she's on my, my on board with me concerning this. And she did try to talk to her dad and say, well, dad, why don't you like the puppy? Why don't you want the puppy? You know, but anyway, I got to take him pee now that he's awake. All right. I got to go. I got to go. Love you guys. Bye.